getting out of bed today. Keep waking up from the previous night. Hey, just announced by Wacom the Mobile Studio Pro, uh, which is the replacement for the Cintiq Companion. Uh, we're going to review some of the announcement and some of the specs, and I'll give you my thoughts on that. First off is the new Pro Pen 2, which has a pressure level sensitivity of 8,192. This is an EMR pen, and just like previous iterations, you can count on having natural tilt support. But what's really important is Wacom is promising virtually no parallax and no lag. We'll have to see that holds up in testing. Again, it's an EMR pen, so that means no batteries, no recharging. And the stats they list here, four times more pressure, four times more accurate, is compared to the previous Wacom Pro pen. So take that for what it's worth. They don't include any kind of uh, pen stand, but there's a pen holder and we'll show that in a second. It's pretty new for Wacom. And you can see it's it's really like a little cylinder and the pen fits inside there. At the end, that looks like the tip of a flashlight. This is where you hold your pen nibs. Next up is the displays, which for the first time, Wacom is offering a 4K display on the 16 inch model, but we're gonna cover some of these, um, we're gonna cover some of these stats, starting with the 13 inch. And uh, as usual, this is 16 by 9 ratio, which is a little disappointing that they don't have a 4 by 3 offering. Um, some things that stand out that I don't like, the contrast ratio on the 13 inch is pretty low um, at 800 to 1. And the brightness is about the same as the Cintiq Companion 2, so if you thought that wasn't bright enough, um, it's not going to be much better on this model. Um, all the other... Um, stats aside from maybe the uh, Adobe RGB is 96% I think that's higher and the response rate at 25 milliseconds um, this isn't going to be a gaming machine and I know some people on the forums are disappointed with it but especially if you're doing video editing or and such but um, you know really if you were you know going to game on a normal TV you're not going to get much better than that anyway so um, I think I think it's a nice compromise and I'm not sure why they can't match uh, other PC-like displays. Uh, I'm sure there's a technical reason for it, but either way, that's the response rate. Max color, 16.7 million. I think that's on par with the previous models. And like the uh, Centene Companion 2, this is a WQHD display, 2560 by 1440. Physical dimensions are, the width is 11.9 inches and the height is 6.52 inches. The active area, you lose a little bit at the top at 11.6. Now let's talk about the new model, the 16 inch. And really, we're only gonna cover the differences. The main difference is obviously is the size. This is a 15.6 inch display with a 4K Ultra HD resolution of 3840 by 2160. Max color 16.7 million, that's the same. Now the one stat that I couldn't really verify was the contrast ratio. Now, I pulled this right off a of Wacom site, which is a thousand to one, and it's better than the 13 inch, but I couldn't verify that this time. The brightness is the same, and the color gamut is 94% Adobe RGB, which is just a little bit lower than the 13 inch model. The main thing, obviously, is the, is the 4K display, and I'm curious to see how that would impact battery life um, especially if you go with the higher model, which, which comes with the NVIDIA Quadro GPU. This unit is 13.6 inches across, 7.65 inches high, with an active area to match. And we're going to talk about these NVIDIA options in a second. Um, it's showing now the express keys and touch rings, but we'll kind of step through this one by one. It comes with Windows 10 Pro. 8 express keys on the 16 inch and 6 on the 13 inch. Touch ring, yes, on the rocker ring. There are no touch strips, like for example, on the larger uh, Cintiqs, you know, for brush size and whatnot. Um, on screen controls, typical. Radio menu, precision mode, yes. Um, and obviously, you can use this as a standard Cintiq, but you need an additional uh, accessory and option we'll talk about in a second. Some more statistics here, um, talking about the express keys more. This is, um, this can be used left or right handed. Again, we spoke about this comes with Windows 10. It is compatible as a Cintiq with the optional Wacom link. 
This is a 6th generation Intel Skylake processor. Uh, the NVIDIA options are varied, we'll talk about that in a second. It comes with a comes with varied option for storage, micro SD slot. The RAM options are from 8 to 16. You cannot expand that. And on optional models, you have a Kensington security lock. Included in some of the models is a new 3D camera. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm not going to go through every single model, just highlight the different options. There are four different types of the 13 inch and two different types of the 16 inch. I would have liked to have seen more of a middle model in the 16 inch line. I mean, that's a, a pretty huge uh, price jump for the uh, screen real estate. Um, on the bottom about the 3D camera is taken off a of Wacom site and it's a little misleading. The 3D camera is available on both models of Wacom Mobile Studio Pro 16 and on the 13 inch models uh, 512 gigabyte version. What that really means is it, it's not available on both 16 inch models. It's available on the 13 inch with the 512 gigabyte hard drive and then also the highest end um, 16 inch version. So that's a that's a little confusing. Um, and the, the other major difference is in the GPU options. So the NVIDIA Quadro M600M, uh, two gigabyte uh, VRAM, that's obviously weaker than, you know, the highest end model, um, NVIDIA Quadro M1000M, which in my opinion is still, you know, if it was, if it was the 4000, that would be really nice, but um, that's what you get. And you know, some of my concerns with this along with, you know, these uh, sort of crazy prices is uh, really, you know, how these things perform in battery life and, you know, you take an NVIDIA Quadro M1000 uh, chipset on a 16 inch display with 4K and run that all day and they're promising six hours of uh, battery life and I just don't know how that's going to go. But, I mean, at least there are multiple SKUs for, you know, different things you can get in at least in the US for somewhere around fifteen hundred dollars and then obviously at the highest end it's it's double that at three thousand but I mean these have never been cheap devices and if you look you know at the competition although they're much higher I mean there really isn't much better than this right now so this is really a big feature um, simultaneous pen and touch support what that means is now for the first time you can have your palm uh, and your pen on the screen at the same time and it'll detect both. Uh, that is a really important feature that people have been asking for for a long time. And now here's sort of what I think is the ugly. Um, and that's Wacom kind of, you know, putting some of these things that used to come with these models, you know, as accessories. Uh, you know, the keyboard was always separate. Um, and, you know, Surface Surface Pro does it, and I know you know a lot of other these companies do it, but I just think it's a bad idea for the price point that they're asking, um, and that's the keyboard. And this Wacom Link, I, I don't know if that's because of you know size or they're just you know parting out another thing they can charge you for. But with any of these uh, new mobile Studio Pros, you cannot use them as a standalone. Cintiq, you know, for example, with your Mac or your you know your PC, unless you have this. Wacom Link uh, device, and I don't know at this point what that's going to cost or um, you know the availability. And then th the last one is you know, for the last two models of the Cintiq Companion, people complained about you know just how terrible the stand was. And you know, Wacom not only doesn't improve the stand from the looks of it, but actually <laughs> makes you pay for it now. So, um, <laughs> you know, I really wish they would have you know, built in a better option, like for example, what the Surface Pro has. I mean, that's about as perfect of a, of a built-in kickstand as you could have, but uh, they chose not to do that. And, you know, and finally, I don't see it listed yet, but it doesn't look like these come with a sleeve of any kind. So, you know, especially with the 16-inch version, I, I guess you'd have to find maybe, you know, a, a sleeve that would fit a 17-inch laptop or something like that, but, I mean, you know, a cheap felt sleeve or something like that just, you know, kind of adds value to these things. And it looks like, at least in my opinion, that uh, as nice as these devices are, they, they couldn't have been less consumer friendly as far as, um, you know, cost 
and, and out of pocket. But I mean, you know, if you're a professional or, you know, you kind of want the best and everything, this is what you have to do. So what does come in the box? Obviously you're getting the tablet, whichever uh, version you pick. Wacom Pro Pen 2, pen case, which we covered earlier with three nibs. So um, they used to give you more nibs than that, even with the Intuos line, but you only get three now. The color rings, nib remover tool, and again, the pen holder. Um, AC power adapter and cable, quick start guide, cleaning cloth, which is gonna come in really handy since they don't give you a friggin' sleeve, and a regulation sheet. So again, um, you know, in the box, bare bones, not a lot of extras. Finally, we'll go through some of the other uh, specs that I didn't think um, fit anywhere else. Uh, this thing comes with, it's a little confusing, there's a little video I have to show, but it comes with three USB-C ports, and then I'm pretty sure a fourth video out USB-C port, which might connect to the, um, the Wacom Link. Um, wireless is 802.11ac, uh, a Bluetooth 4.1, your, your front camera is 5 megapixel, the back one is 8 megapixel, and then, um, you know, again on the optional models, you have the, the Intel RealSense 3D camera, which, you know, if you were, uh, you know, do CAD or, you know, any kind of 3D work, I mean, you know, that might be worth the price alone. Um, not much in a way of, you know, speakers or... You know, again, you can see the battery life there. They're promising six hours, but as they note, battery life will vary, and that means if you're pumping, you know, 4K video, you know, all day, it's uh, you're not going to get six hours. So, charging time two hours, and um, the optional Wacom Blink is uh, no lower than Windows 7 or OS X 10.10. Limited warranty, one year in the U.S., which I think is... Uh, for a device like that it is way too low, but in Europe you get um, two years. And then we'll actually take a look, you know, at this video. That's the 3D camera. Uh, the guy from Wacom is showing. Uh, that's your volume rocker. I think that might be rotation lock, power, and then uh, that's a headphone jack, and then your SD slot. There's the three USB-C ports I talked about, and to the right you could see uh, the fourth one, which I'm not really sure what it is. And we have our two uh, 3D cameras. I can't tell the difference, but I included both of them. And then, you know, just final thoughts. Look, they don't make better than this. Uh, most of the features people have been asking for here, you know, it's really just a matter of, um, you know, price to value, I think. Um, but with the promise and no parallax and the virtually no lag and the increase in specs and Skylake and you know, a dedicated GPU like the Surface Book has. Uh, I think these are going to be really good devices. I, I do worry about heat and, um, you know, fan noise, that kind of hardware on such a thin device. Hopefully they've solved that so these things aren't smoking up in your hands and or, you know, the fans are just going nonstop. But um, we'll have to see once they release and I'll have more at that point. Thanks for watching.